Yields back her time. Thank you very much. The uh, gentleman from Florida, Mr. Frost, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm proud to represent Central Florida here in the United States Congress. Central Florida is home to Orlando, one of the top uh, tourist destinations in the entire country. The closest, uh, closest passport agency to Orlando, Florida, is actually in Miami. Um, it's about 235 miles away, about a four-hour drive, an expensive plane ticket or train ticket to get there. The Miami Passport Agency is only open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, I'm concerned about the people who work Monday through Friday, the working class people who have a hard time taking off. Um, to go uh, travel four hours to Miami for their passport applications. Um, Assistant Secretary Bitter, I understand the Miami Passport Agency staff are working extremely hard um, under the constraints that they have and the hours that they're open. The problem for my constituents is it's not always possible to take time off to get down there. Are there any solutions that come to mind on ways that we can address this problem? Yes, thank you so much for uh, the question, Congressman. Um, uh, we have 7,000 acceptance agencies across the United States um, where people can apply in person. For renewals, of course, people can send them in by mail. Um, when we do um, our geographic surveys, uh, we find that 95% um, uh, of our customers live within 25 miles of an acceptance agency, and 90% of Americans live within a five-hour drive of a counter. Um, what we're aiming to do, of course, is to ensure that our, our uh, service standards are widely publicized so people can, can plan their trips and they don't have to go to a passport agency. Um, and also to invest in technology so people can um, have more access to the ability to apply from their own homes. We would love to work with you if, you've, if there are more opportunities to increase the number of acceptance facilities so people can apply in person in your district. We would love to work with you on that. Okay, perfect, perfect. I'd love to work with you on that as well. Um, Assistant Secretary uh, Bitter, yesterday I sent a letter to Deputy Assistant Secretary Arndt um, asking if the Department of State would consider accepting ap appointments on Saturday um, at that office. Um, would you be able to commit to taking a look at that letter and exploring that option, just so that way working families who have a hard time getting there during the week, they have an opportunity to go to a counter and see somebody? Certainly, and in fact, our um our counters across the network um, have, uh, each of them have opened um, some weekend hours, but I would love to look at that letter and we'll certainly work Perfect. With you on Perfect. Thank that. you so much. Thank uh, you. Thank you to committing to uh, taking a look at the letter, looking at how we can uh, uh, accommodate working families on a Saturday, and also looking at how we can probably get a counter in Florida's 10th Congressional District. My constituents have family reunions, business trips, honeymoons to get to, and so we just want to make sure we're doing everything we can to advocate for them. Um, I was just this morning rallying with, the, uh, with AFGE, um, with a lot of our workers. One of my colleagues brought this up earlier, but the Social Security Administration currently ranks as one of the worst federal workplaces. Um, Mr. Poise, what's being done to support our government employees who are currently working under some pretty uh, severe constraints in, in terms of uh, capacity? So thanks for that question. So, you know, again, staffing is really the number one reason that, that our employees are reporting they feel overworked. So again, with the fiscal year 2023 appropriation that we've received, again, we are grateful for the increase we've received over fiscal year 2022. We've implemented a pretty aggressive hiring plan for this year. Uh, I'd, I'd already mentioned that we uh, reported um, about 2,000 net gains so far this fiscal year. So kind of a, a help is on the way for those employees out there on our front lines who are working uh, day in and day out for us. So I, mean, I think that's the, the biggest challenge that we see is they need staff. They need the additional support in their offices next to them. For the next fiscal year, uh, Social Security Administration requests additional funding to improve customer service in field offices and hotlines, address processing center backlogs, and reduce uh, the disability claims black backlog. I know you've been expressing that capacity is really the main root cause of a lot of the problems we're seeing. Which federal body is in charge of funding the Social Security Administration? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand your question. Which federal body is in charge of funding the Social Security Administration? Who approves? Your budget. Oh, Congress. United States Congress. What percentage of the funding uh, your agency requested has actually been authorized? So for I mean, like 14 of the last 20 years, we've not received the president's budget level of requested funding. Uh, so again, we've been severely underfunded for multiple years. 
Uh, yes. Um, well, there you have it. I mean, the reason why disability claims are slower than molasses is not, you know, just a fact of life. It's because Republicans in Congress repeatedly have chosen to defund the Social Security um, and the Social Security Administration. What, what was the effect of telework during the pandemic? So really telework allowed our operations to continue during the pandemic. Um, and when our, our service transitioned to mostly a telephone-based service, again, during the early parts of the pandemic, again, our offices never fully closed to the public. They were limited to appointments only to protect both our employees and the visiting public who often um, you know, met some of those vulnerability criteria with, with the pandemic. Uh, so really telework allowed us to continue our operations. And now that we've fully re-entered uh, back in March of 2022, again, we do have telework still within the agency itself. It's mostly driven by a business decision. Managers decide who is telework eligible and who is not telework eligible, and also have the flexibility to recall or suspend telework in, say, our field offices if there's an expected high demand day or something like that. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back his time. Thank you very much.